Now, just because there are no balls inside uh, of this bushing, it's still called a bearing. Want to know why? Please. Because you have no. You have no. Mammoth. Gentlemen, ladies and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And for you guys joining me today, basically what I'm doing is kind of following up uh, from what I showed you guys in another video that I put out recently. And it was in regards to cracking my Tranks 500 and having look it look this. like somebody shat all over, over it. Which is basically what happens with some greases after they're exposed and oxidized and whether they're coming in contact with water or not. They'll change color. Yamalube does it. Uh, Corrosion X uh, grease does it. Other greases do it as well. But it just looks nasty and it was, I over applied it to protect it from the salt because this sees a lot of surf duty. And uh, last time I used it was actually sharking on the beach. And I figured, let me do a tear down, clean it up. And I came across the bastard bearing. I call it the bastard bearing because the bearing located in the base of the reel. I call it the, the bastard bearing because it's all the way down at the bottom of the reel. It's, you got to take everything apart to get to it. And it's at the base of the handle shaft here in one of the lowest portions of the frame. So anytime water gets in there, it's likely to come in contact with this bearing. And over time, it shits the bed. And if you listen here, nice and crispy, all right? So I figured the gentleman that actually gave me this tool also sent me some of the most expensive bearings on the face of the earth. <laughs> Completely random. And what's even crazier was the second that I saw the package and I saw the, the bearing itself, I'm like, wait a minute. I, under, I know what that is because I tried sourcing it at a reasonable cost years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, I tried to get my hands on this stuff. And it's called DuPont Vespel. This is the package he sent me in the mail along with a million other things. And it's, it's listed to be used on the lower knob bearing. Now, I, I, I don't use the factory knob and I figured while I'm at it, this size bearing that he had planned on using for the handle knobs also does uh, fit the base of the handle shaft. Uh, what I did basically was I took this DuPont Vespel that he had machined for me into a bearing. Now, just because there are no, no balls. balls inside uh, of this bushing, it's still called a bearing. It's a journal bearing. And it fits perfectly here. I needed to actually uh, take up a little bit of the overall width and it's easily machined or hand sanded down uh, to the thickness that I needed in order to fit all the shims on here. So what I'm basically gonna do is put the reel back together. If you guys uh, ever wanted to see the inner workings of uh, the biggest low profile bait casting reel on the planet, uh, this is the Tranks almost torn down to frame. I already went ahead and greased this, cleaned this out. It's all ready to go. Cleaned out the X shit ball bearing. So uh, I guess what we can do is go ahead now and pop our all back together. And the reason why I'm choosing to put it here is because there's nothing to corrode. Once this is in place, just regular maintenance is all you're basically going to need. And it is a perfect tolerance. I mean, there is absolutely no play at all whatsoever to the point where it's going to have to uh, more likely not than not run in. And if this were a freshwater bait caster, uh, like the Concept Z that uses a similar technology. I mean, it's just, you know, journal bearings, you know, they have a wider tolerance, probably, you know, maybe a third of a millimeter or a quarter of a millimeter in certain locations, at least, at least in mine. And what's weird is on the Z3 versus the Concept Z, the Z, the smaller one, had uh, some sloppy tolerances between the bushings and whatever su they're supporting, whereas the Z3, it didn't. So we're gonna go ahead now, pop that clip back on. This is an awesome little tool, by the way. I put a link down below for this as well. Um, it's kind of didn't, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> but I put a link down below for it. Good, so that's good to go.
beautiful. And you can see there's very little wobble since the tolerance is actually a little bit tighter than what you would get with the bearing. You know what? Let me just apply a little bit of oil. A little bit of TSI 321 down in there. And load it on up. This was never a location that I was ever very sparing with oil when it came to lubricating bearings. Because you're protecting the bearing and you're protecting the frame itself. Beautiful. I have that pinion leaning on the X ship bearing. I have the dogs already on the thumb bar kick plate. Like so. Put the bottom washer on top of the plate. Put the main gear on top there. And we should be able to just lean the pinion down like so. Put the return yoke return springs back into place. And uh, go ahead and apply our grease. This is Crytox. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, how many times in my lifetime am I going to do exactly what I just did there? <laughs> uh, I, it, it never only when I'm on when I'm on camera filming because I'm focusing and looking at viewfinder <laughs> hearing noises in the background and wondering if they're on camera <laughs> uh, only only when I'm filming <laughs> this is staying in there just so you guys get an idea of some of the stupid sh that goes on sometimes I edit some of this stuff out but this is at least the tenth time I've done this it's oh, awesome <laughs> and with the big heavy main gear it just goes flying
All right. Wow, that's nice. That is really nice. Okay, so uh, that pretty much uh, sums it up. So basically, this is a Shimano Tranks 500 now with uh, <laughs> a DuPont Vespel bearing uh, at its most sensitive uh, and heaviest load uh, location. So whenever there's a 200-pound gorilla on the end of this handle, it's going on the clutch sleeve and the needle bearing there and the DuPont Vespel bushing. We'll see how it holds up. I'm willing to bet it's going to do just fine because we're seeing uh, a trend now in some of the Japanese bait casters, you know, Shimano, uh, that they're putting bushings in areas where they used to put bearings. Uh, Shimano Scorpion is an example uh, where they removed the bearing loca un located underneath that in the same location. So uh, it's with all that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this was pretty uh, interesting. I got to say thanks to Ernie yet again. Uh, who had supplied me with it again. It's nothing that he's selling. I'm not trying to pitch his stuff uh, If you saw the other video again, I was you know going over this tool He reached out to me after I put the video out and he was more excited that somebody was interested in something that he made other than the fact that he could make a couple bucks off of it and uh you know, <laughs> wait till he sees where these people are reaching out to him from. I'm willing to bet he's going to get a couple people from Australia uh, and possibly Japan and Germany. So, you know, he's got a little tool that he made, and it's it's a great, useful little thing. And while I was playing around with it here and I had this on display, uh, it kind of led into another, uh, I guess, a perfect segue into uh, something else that he had sent me, which were those uh, DuPont Vespel bearings that I had only dreamed about because I'm not spending $500 on a tiny sheet or I'm not spending $400 on a discarded rod that is no longer in use for these companies uh, just to send it out to a machinist who, who would then, you know, make it for me. So in actuality, go on eBay and look up DuPont Vespel. I'll put the links down below. If, it, yeah, see, see what it costs to buy just the raw material and then figure what it's going to cost to have it sent out to have somebody machine it or unless you're capable of doing it yourself. I'm not. Not to these tolerances anyway. And, uh, and yeah, if you guys were curious what this is, uh, this is if I need to clip in. Uh, there's no harness lugs on the Tranks 500. Would have been nice if they included them because you, you can go up to almost 20 pounds of drag on this thing and it can, it can, you can gobble it up. Uh, but this just kind of makes it if I need to, like, rest my arms if I'm strapped up to a big fish. So, until next time, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was just kind of an aside and a, a secondary follow-up to that other video that looked like somebody shat all over the inside of my, one of my favorite reels of all time, Tranks 500. And if you're uh, curious as to why the, the <laughs> drag star in the handle knob or the spool tension adjustment knob is this kind of matte silver, uh, that's what happens when you use... Uh, a specific uh, degreaser. Um, yeah, don't use the Dawn commercial degreaser in your high temperature uh, ultrasonic cleaner at around 90 degrees uh, Celsius. Yeah, and then that this is what happens. Gives a nice ring though. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> so, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. <laughs>